Welcome back. Disgraced former tech CEO Elizabeth Holmes is set to be sentenced in a federal court later today, nearly a year after she was first convicted of fraud. Yeah, Holmes was found by a California jury to have misled investors in her now infamous biotech startup Theranos. She's now facing decades behind bars. For more on this, we're joined by NBC News legal analyst Danny Savalos. Danny, thanks for being with us this morning. So an important bit of background here. Holmes is about to have her second child and is now asking for a maximum sentence of just 18 months under house arrest. Well, prosecutors, they're pushing for that 15 years in prison and a payment of $800 million in restitution. So are we expecting any leniency for her here? Leniency is a weird word because of the bizarre state of federal sentencing law. I'll give you an example. The statutory maximum here is 20 years. The federal sentencing guidelines are supposed to calculate some kind of reasonable, I guess, sentence. But in this case, the federal sentencing guidelines, if you calculate them, yield a sentence that is beyond the statutory maximum. In other words, the guidelines ask for an illegal sentence. So if we're talking about who's being reasonable, you could say the government's being reasonable because they're asking for a lot less than 20 years. On Holmes's side, I got to say, I don't know what happened between client and lawyer, but I totally sympathize. It may be unreasonable for them to ask for such a light sentence. But look, when you're talking to your client, your client doesn't want you to go in there and say, oh, give my client five years. They want to shoot the moon. They want zero. They want to be home. So they want to pay you to get up there and ask the judge for the lightest possible sentence, sometimes even if it's not realistic. So, Danny, she still has some allies. More than 100 letters have been filed in support of Holmes, including one from New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, who described her as a friend who, quote, holds on to the hope that she can make contributions to the lives of others and that she can, despite mistakes, make the world a better place. So how much sway do these types of letters of support, especially from powerful people like Senator Booker, usually have in a judge's sentence? After all this time my of doing this, my answer to that is, who knows? I really don't know, because uh, it's certainly not one of the critical factors under uh, Section 3553. It's not one of the important factors that the judge considers. But is it important? Is it better to have Cory Booker write you a letter of recommendation than dear old mom? Well, of course it is. I mean, it's all about who's influential, saying that you're a good person and you deserve a light sentence. But after all this time doing this, I, I really am not sure how valuable having 100 letters versus five really good letters, uh, depending on who they're from. It's really hard to say whether these letters have any effect. But look, if you can get Cory Booker to write you a letter for your sentencing hearing, bravo on you. Yeah, certainly can't hurt. So, Danny, home sentencing, this is all coming at a time when other tech startups, tech founders are in the hot seat. Just yesterday, we spoke to you about a lawsuit filed against FTX, that controversial crypto exchange, not to mention everything that, of course, going on with Twitter right now. So what kind of precedent could these cases together going forward set when it comes to big tech accountability? Yeah, the, the case you were just talking about in the news is not really the same as the Elizabeth Holmes case. They're similar, but I think what we're seeing here is a moving trend towards, look, if you're a hot new startup person, a young uh, entrepreneur, and you uh, uh, have people invest millions or billions of dollars into this high-risk uh, business, well, it seems that you have to be very careful that you don't mislead investors or people on your uh, management team to get your job done. I think that this is a tale of don't let greed get in the way of doing the right thing. And a good life lesson in general. All right, Danny Savalos, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.